That's right, on Monday. That's probably uh, look, work right now on Exxon Mobil numbers. Let's do it, because uh, the futures are going to move pace, uh, on these are, potentially, actually, and they're already right. down. Yeah, Exxon Mobil numbers, uh, looks like that company came in with earnings of 55 cents versus the 70 cents that the street had been anticipating. Uh, it looks like that's a clean number. I'm going through the release right now, and I don't see anything additional that, uh, that should be stripped out. Um, uh, the stock's down by 2.1 percent. This is a Dow component. Uh, again, uh, that is below the 70 cents the street was expecting. Revenue, we don't always look at that number very closely because I think there's a small number of analysts that actually give us that estimate. But revenue came in at $63.6 billion. Uh, the quick, couple of the quick highlights that they're making on this is that upstream liquid production grows by 5 percent versus the first quarter of 2018 because of the Permian. I, I think the big question here is going to be have they missed have by they it missed so by badly in this environment? Well, oil prices are on the climb. We know that happened at the end of the last quarter. It's really going to be reflected in this quarter. So I guess how much, yeah. why did they miss by that? I don't much? know the answer. I'm going through it as well. Is it refining? I mean, John Kildoff is here. It's great because he can plow, yeah. plow through them as well. But what I'll say quickly is this. If you look at ExxonMobil, it's basically been in this decline in terms of stock price for the last five years. We've had rallies along the way. Each rally has been sold off. That's what's apparently happening right now. I'd love to be able to go through these numbers and figure out, because quite frankly, at the end of this number, valuation-wise, it's 16 times forward earnings. That's one of the cheaper valuations that Exxon has seen in quite some time. So yeah, I'll plow through it, but like a Chevron it, it, yes, it's exactly yeah. right. So I'm, I'm curious as to what happened here. You're curious. Uh, all right. I am uh, curious. That you know, chair does something. I mean, I know, I'm, I'm reading it as I talk. It's not easy to sure, do. You're curious. Andrew says that. Also. Ultimately. Yeah. Ultimately, says that. And joining us now to talk about uh, Exxon's earnings, John Kildoff, again, a capital founding partner and a CNBC contributor. All right. Uh, we want the lowdown on this since you've had two and a half minutes to <laughs> think about it. Uh, actually, three and a half. So it just should be good, John. What do you think? Absolutely, Joe. I mean, what makes it especially disappointing was that the CEO was just on Wall Street a couple of months ago now uh, and at the investor day. Not even. Ta it talking it up, right? Yeah. Becky, you had that great interview with him. Um, there's no real reason for this. We'll have to see. I don't honestly know how they could have missed so badly here. I'll tell you this, ExxonMobil has been a disappointment on earnings day for the past, I'm going to say, year and a half guy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they used to be the Yankees. You, could, you used to be able to take them to the bank and, and just buy this stock and forget it. Um, it has rebounded massively off its lows from December with the rest of the market, and it has actually gotten a little bit expensive here at about 16 times earnings, in my view. All right, let me tell you what Darren Woods says, the chairman and chief executive officer. He says that the solid operating performance in the first quarter helped mitigate the impact of challenging downstream and chemical margin environments. Uh, what does that mean? That means the refining sector got hurt. And I, 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 that is obvious to me. I think I, I talked about that uh, yesterday when I was uh, setting up this uh, interview with you guys. Um, refining margins have gotten really compressed here uh, over the past quarter. The right, when crude oil prices go off to the races to the upside, the profit margins at the refiners get squeezed because they can't pass along uh, the extra cost. Compounding the problem was there was a glut of gasoline on the market really from the latter part of last year through the first quarter. Um, things have turned around now because we're in the summer blend of gasoline. There's actually a little bit of a spot shortage. We've had some refinery issues uh, well, since then. He, he so, addresses some of that, too. He says yep. the change in Canadian crude differentials, also heavily, or heavy scheduled maintenance, similar to what they saw in the fourth quarter of 2018, affected their quarterly results. That's right. When so. the province of Alberta shut in production, basically, to get the, the Western Canadian select price more up towards the uh, international market, that put another squeeze on them. So in, in a way, for, and that's the thing with these integrateds. I, I, use, I like them because you do get the full exposure, and they should be able to make it up on, on one part of the business, even though they get hit on another. Uh, but this is one of those times where the perfect storm sort of came to the refining sector uh, and, and, and overwhelmed what is obviously good stuff in terms of increased oil production, increased Permian, Permian production. Per, per, increased Permian production yep. and uh, at a plan for doing that, which is what you see Chevron, Chevron doing right now with Anadarko. Right, see, and a price that went from 42 bucks at the end of last year to now over 60. Right. So the, quickly, is it an Exxon-specific thing? Because you heard Valero numbers the other day, which were pretty good, and if I remember, Chevron right? And we got Chevron in about So, 25 I mean, Valero's minutes. a refiner. I mean, that stock was up, I think, 3% yesterday. So. You know, Exxon can say whatever they want. Now it makes you wonder if it's Exxon specific or you broaden this out to the energy sector. Just looking through this, it appears to be more Exxon specific than anything else. 
I think it is to a degree, Guy. They, they obviously have a big exposure to the chemical sector. Yeah, so as, how as much of CEO. it is management, but how much of it is just with the, there, the Who was the other I major? That, that, there was another sh major that had awful uh, numbers, and it was because of the uh, some of the upstream I think Shell, was, Shell, was, Shell had problems. Yeah. And I think you'll see a similar story, Guy, out of Chevron, too. Valero benefits from having exposure to cheap you know, Permian type oil in the Gulf of Mexico. Right. So they're centered down there. Whereas Exxon's more exposed internationally to the much higher Brent price uh, and, the, and the weaker, again, international gasoline market. I mean, there were cargoes just going begging uh, in the Atlantic Basin and out, out in Singapore uh, really for weeks. Darren Woods is making the point that they think they're on plan, that their they're, they're plans for, for what they're doing and trying to change and streamline things is on target and in the works. Would you say that? I would, and I would also say this. Um, th this refining issue will, will correct itself. Mm -hmm. A lot of maintenance coming up. They are already the gasoline um, profit margin. Uh, there's a word for it in the business, but has blown out. Uh, out in California, it's like $104 a, a barrel, for example. Wow. And, very, and gotten very high here again. So that'll be fine. What you have here now is this huge portfolio of, of oil, crude oil, that Exxon now has exposure to, and who is getting help from the likes of Saudi Arabia in particular mm -hmm. to get that oil price back up. <laughs> Saudi Arabia very much in the driver's seat right now, the only one with spare capacity and the only one willing at times, as we're seeing aggressively, to dial back their output to support the price. Can we uh, take a longer term look at, at shares of ExxonMobil? Right now we see it's down by about 2.4 percent today. It's down by just over 1 percent for the week. Uh, the price has picked up pretty steadily since the beginning of the year, as we've also seen WTI come back up. And that's in terms of the chart. That's what I'm talking about. If you look, that goes back four and a half years. And you see we've had a series of lower lows and lower highs. I mean, to John's point, a series of disappointments. And we can argue about valuation. Clearly, it turns out valuation was expensive. Although he well, just said that he thinks that, this, that the management is on the right path right now with, with what I, I was right really impressed by the was. investor day, I have to say. And I hope, yeah. hopefully I didn't get sucked in to, to the PR. But, uh, but I, I have to say that it, it sounded great. I, I liked what they were doing. I think everybody liked what they were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was very transparent. I mean, first time we ever had the CEO. I bet he'll be on the conference call, for example. Right. We never had that before in, in Exxon's history. So there's a new, there's a very refreshing transparency here that's, that's, that's building. So you if you look at the, the ExxonMobil chart, too, it very much data. tracks the S&P yeah. 500. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, if you blocked out ExxonMobil and put back, you know, from the end of last year till now, you could have sworn it was the S&P 500, yeah. not specifically ExxonMobil. But again, the story here now, particularly with this pullback, you'll, you, now, it is, now it could be relatively cheap, especially if it gets beat up today. The, the dividend yield at 4% coming into today, We'll, we'll tick back up closer to five. That's, that makes it worthwhile. Real quickly, with Chevron coming up in about 20 minutes' time, you expect that they could see some similar problems because of the asset mix that they have it's, as well? It's, it's almost an identical picture, um, except that I guess Chevron has a more uh, greater exposure to the West Coast, or where they might benefit from that. They also have a much bigger exposure to, uh, to the Permian assets. And again, we've had a lot of pickup in price there. So uh, they may be a little better, but of course, the focus there is going to be on their uh, attempt to buy uh, Anadarko. Mm -hmm. Stocks have already been hit on that, and um, you know they're going to be. You think I they'll think, have to come back with an offer more? Absolutely, and I think they absolutely will. Yeah. That's going to hit the stock some more. I think you let you step back from Chevron here, let the stock get hit on all this M and A around Anadarko and maybe others, and then get in that.